my question is about uh, life, like uh, how long we should wish to live. I mean, uh, like I, I, I'm getting a reference from, uh, I mean, one of my test book uh, during my school days. There was a, a shlok, I don't know from where it was picked up, but like in Sanskrit books, like random shlokes, there is a chapter uh, in which uh, they mention, uh, you know, uh, shlokas from different, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, different uh, spiritual uh, books. So in that, uh, my teacher told me that it is saying that uh, one should wish to live for 100, year, 100 years doing work. So that's Vedant. That that's coming from the Upanishads. That's not a random shlok. That's that's an Upanishad yeah, I, mean, uh, <laughs> so, um, I think it's it's the Isha Vase, if I'm not mistaken. Can somebody Google? This is the Isha Vase. Yes. Huh? This is the Isha Vase. So uh, my I mean my question is what is that work or karm they're talking about? And do I really need to wish to live for hundred years given that? the current situation uh, of the world. Like every second I'm living, I'm like some way or the other disturbing this whole universe. I mean, not maybe whole universe, but at least the world. See, uh, things uh, can never be great once you are born as a human being. <laughs> huh? They are uh, they are not great today, and they were not great even then. Hmm? This uh, verse is around two thousand uh, five year five hundred years old, hmm? and even then, the seer, the rishi, sees that there is a need to live for hundred years because that's the time that a certain project demands. You cannot be over with great projects in a jiffy. Or can you? Can you just prepare for the J for five days and get in? Difficult. Difficult. No. Difficult. So there is a much, much bigger project that demands your entire lifetime. And that project is uh, not uh, the project of happy uh, living uh, with uh, a lot of consumption and self-gratification. No, that's not the project called life. That project is called liberation, project liberation. I said, you cannot ever be in a great situation once you are born. Because one is born into bondages. That's the Upanishadic view. Hmm? What is the bondage? Ignorance is the bondage, lack of knowledge. Once you are born, what do you know? Think of the baby, the newly born baby. What does she know? Nothing. And that state of ignorance continues throughout life. We do not know what this universe is all about. We do not know who we are. We do not know what kind of relationships to have and with what particular objects. We do not know what decisions to make. We do not know how to proceed in life. And all that has been cumulatively called as sorrow, duk. That's also the Buddhist view. Hmm? Vedant and Buddhism conquer on this one. They say the beginning is sorrow. And therefore, the end has to be liberation from sorrow. That's project liberation from you. Man, when I say man, I mean human beings, is born into sorrow. The world itself is called Dukhale, a place of sorrow. And they are not being unnecessarily pessimistic or cynical. They are seeing it. They are seeing that everybody is suffering and a lot of that suffering is needless. It is just coming from our uh, useless uh, preconceptions, false notions, lack of uh, right knowledge. Hmm? And that needs to be then removed. 
our false notions need to be scrapped our superstitions and all the beliefs that we hold about life we need to get rid of them and it's not easy to get rid of them because we got those beliefs from somewhere hmm? there are several supply lines that are delivering nonsense to our mind so project liberation then widens into the project of liberating everybody because as long as those supply lines are active they will keep draining garbage into your mind please understand if i understand but others do not then i am related to others in such a way that they will keep pulling me down they will not allow me to rise in liberation hmm? so the upanishads say that the purpose of your life is liberation of the self and welfare of others now neither of these objectives is easy to meet and these two go hand in hand your own liberation and the extent to which you can be of use to others these two go hand in hand and they are not easy to accomplish therefore one needs 100 years to ceaselessly strive that's what the verse is saying you need 100 years obviously if you are charismatic you might accomplish it in a in a smaller time but that does not usually happen so let's simply play safe and demand the entire coat of 100 years chances are even the 100 full years will prove inadequate so immense is the task at hand hmm? what are the implications if even 100 years are going to be insufficient where is the time to waste tell me if even 100 years are insufficient and you're not going to have 100 years right given the state of the world neither you nor me will go that far so first of all we will have what 60 80 something if we are lucky and even in that 60 80 we spend a lot of time just snoozing and gossiping and idling and wasting in all possible ways that's what that verse is supposed to caution you against even 100 years are insufficient from where have you found time to waste son that's what the seer is asking you rather reprimanding you hmm? one has to understand the purpose of life before one can understand the meaning of this verse life is not for the purpose of self gratification life is not so that you get a cozy job from the campus or you get into an ms or an mba program and go out and make big dollars no the upanishads don't forbid that they say do that if you want to do that but remember that is not the purpose of life if all that happens along the way fine if all that aids the process of your inner enhancement fine but that cannot become an end in itself getting it when you realize who you are and what you are born for then suddenly you are struck with the immensity of the challenge in your face it's a colossal challenge because we we are not human beings we are masses of ignorance the scriptures put it euphemistically and say that it is ignorance that is born and ignorance that speaks and breathes and walks about just an huge bundle of ignorance that's what a human being is and that ignorance is sorrow it's just that we get so used to that sorrow so acclimatized that we start taking it as normal hmm? 
because you would want to question that if there is an all pervasive sorrow why aren't people yelling and shrieking and beating their chests and running somewhere to just give up their lives if indeed the the sages of vedant and the buddha were right if, if because buddha said you know his, his first noble truth is sorrow sarvam dukham life is sorrow if that indeed is the case why don't we find people shrieking and weeping because as human beings we have a very unfortunate capacity the capacity to get adjusted the capacity to get acclimatized or conditioned so if you remain in a particular state for very very long you start taking that as normal but the fact is what you take as normal is not your nature there is a difference between your behavior and your nature classically it is called as the difference between vritti and swabhav swabhav is your real nature which remains hidden beneath heaps of conditioning and we get so deeply conditioned that we lose all all for want of a better word memory of our true nature we start behaving as if this uh, this uh, daily getting up and washing your face and just going randomly to some place and cheating in exams and uh, you know then uh, sending uh, spam to somebody or receiving nonsense from somebody hmm? and going and uh, just slapping somebody from behind we start behaving as if all this is our nature as if this is what we are born for we we'll think of human life the ordinary human life keep the few exceptions apart what does a normal human being do apart from this nonsense from morning till night and then more nonsense in the dreams right so 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 first of all you have to see that this is not what you are here for this is the way animals operate living for the sake of absolutely nothing go and ask a buffalo what it lives for it will look at you with great wonderment rather amusement what a silly question purpose of life the same kind of look you will get from most so called human beings as well you just ask them what is the purpose of life and you will be wondering whether it is a man or a buffalo you are looking at the same kind of looks you will get huh purpose the purpose is to eat and get fat and have sex and produce calves and have some kind of a lord who will milk you and feed you in return is that not the the life of most people you will go to some corporate master and he will milk you not not physically obviously and then he will feed you and you will feel so grateful you will display your whatever n figure salary to everybody and you will say you see i am so lucky but how is that different from being a milch cattle and there have been certain people who have asked this question and it is only those people who have really lived on this planet all the others like us we are just somehow surviving they have asked is this what i am here for to graze and to be chained and to deliver some output and to be fed in return 
you know buffaloes they cannot even breed at will the master decides when they will get pregnant and how many times you must know that that too is the story of most of mankind even such intimate decisions are never individual somebody else decides all these things for us and we accept those things consciously unconsciously sometimes we don't even know that we have accepted those things that is sorrow that is sorrow it is just that you know because it happens continuously so we have lost sense of it the purpose of life is to beat this sorrow and and, and vedant says buddha didn't go that far but vedant says the purpose of life is joy the purpose of life is joy and if you cannot get to that joy you have wasted and that's the reason why those 100 years are being prayed for not so that you can have a good time hmm? the general urge to keep just living on that is called in the scriptures as jijivisha jijivisha too guides you to have a longer life you you go to any dying person and he'll say i want to live longer no that's not the kind of desire being expressed in this shlok not the usual quest to live a few more years that's not what is being expressed here you are asking for time so that you can complete the project and the project is not consumption the project is liberation and this is called mumuksha 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 is the desire to be liberated jijivisha is the desire to just live on so that you can consume more and more the verse has to be interpreted rightly so uh, like if i may connect it so right now uh, i am doing physics and the reason i chose i mean uh, it was not random uh, randomly allocated i chose this branch the reason was that uh, i wanted to work for fundamental sciences to to gain more knowledge and to give more knowledge to the world that was my uh, main uh, motivation at that point of time and i think uh, that's kind of more or less same so am i going somewhere in the right direction or like should i be cautious at some point of time see see anybody who makes any choice hmm, all by himself all for himself hmm, is for sure going right and when in the indian society someone consciously opts for science chances are that the decision is auspicious because uh, uh, the indian society does not really respect science we have we have we have respect for religion and we have respect for technology but we have disrespect for spirituality and we have disrespect for science so if you have chosen science wonderful the challenge would unfold here on can you stick to your guns you will you because because in in the sciences in the pure sciences or basic sciences still in india there is not much so you will find all these chaps around you they are uh, you know uh, walking away with fat packages and then uh, it will be your uh, um, moment to be with the with the seer the one who came to you during your school days hmm? so i have seen a lot of people succumb at that stage does not matter the stream you come from you start opting for consulting or finance or uh, or information technology or or something else you know that's uh, trending so you will be tested you will be tested and uh, i pray that you pass the test 
not just pass it but uh, pass it again and again and again because the test is continuous eh? and you keep passing it for 100 years thank you, thank you so much <laughs> this means a lot to me thank you so much. welcome